First, I would like to thank the Lenape people for allowing us all to speak on their traditional territory. Greetings, Madam Chair. My name is Takaya, and my ancestral name is Jagajimuch. I'm from the Slyman Nation, and I will be reporting back to my community. I have traveled here on my own funds. On behalf of Native Children's Survival, I would like to establish an Indigenous Children's Fund with the Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues to ensure the survival and well-being of we, the Indigenous children and youth, now and for generations to come. For centuries, our nations have sustained the familiar cycles of poverty and cultural extinguishment, as well as their ensuing counterparts inadequate health care and education, infant mortality, drug abuse, language loss, distance from self-sustaining traditional practices, and suicide. Due to the continuation of historic exclusion, attacks on our cultures, and discrimination, we, the indigenous youth, are subjected to colonization and the devastating after effects of residential and boarding schools. These ingredients of complete destruction of our nations have become an integral part of indigenous communities and are felt on an intergenerational level. Indigenous youth are, are a product of our communities and so these negative factors become parts of our identity and discriminate against our human rights and right to self-determination. An Indigenous Children's Fund would specifically address the focus areas as stated in major UN report declaring the state of the world's indigenous peoples. Areas such as culture and language because when a language dies, the sense of community and belonging, especially in a youth perspective, dies along with it. Health, because all indigenous children are most likely to die under the age of five then live to an adult in all regions of the world. Education, environment, poverty, and well-being. Um, isolated indigenous Inuit youth communities alone commit to some of the highest rates of suicide in the world. The Neskantaga First Nations have declared a state of emergency because 27 youth attempted suicide within a 12-month time period. When my friend Peter asked a young indigenous boy in Canada to show him his family, the boy showed him the graveyard and said, this is my brother and his girlfriend, this is my uncle, and this is my best friend. My own cousin Janine took her life at age 14. Human rights. I grew up in the midst of a land struggle between my nation and the Canadian government making false claims to partake in a treaty with my people, resulting in the loss of nationhood and of the only specified indigenous rights implemented in Canada as well as 97.7% of our territory. This is degrading to our human rights. Sport. We view sport as a fundamental human right integral to maintaining healthy human relationships. We see sports as a way to help disputes between states. Yet many, indig many indigenous children do not have accessibility to sports due um, to increasing poverty. And so these, fo these focus areas incorporate all essential elements of a youth's medicine wheel of healthy living. The spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical activities. Currently, indigenous children only receive UNICEF benefits if we belong to a UNICEF-constructed program in our regions or are a victim of natural disaster, disease, or war. And what is left unrealized is that indigenous peoples are in a constant hidden war with governments, and children fall major victims to such wars. Major programs that somewhat assist indigenous youth fail to recognize the importance of reestablishing culture in the lives of indigenous children so we may become successful in our lives. The importance of establishing an indigenous children's fund in this moment cannot be stressed enough for our elders are dying before they can effectively pass down the culture. Therefore, Madam Chair, we would like to respectfully recommend that the future work of the permanent forum include one, we recommend the creation and establishment of the Native Children's Survival Indigenous Children's Fund with an intergenerational advisory board. This fund will be established in collaboration with the UNPFII with specific areas that have been identified that the Indigenous Children's Fund will address and assist. Two, that Mr. Robbie Romero, founder of Native Children's Survival and UN Ambassador of Youth for the Environment, be appointed by the PFII as a special envoy for the ICF, as this is his concept and his business work beginning in 1990. Madam Chair, I would like to bring to your attention that my written submitted intervention further addresses the aforementioned issues at a greater length, which an Indigenous Children's Fund may address and assist. Thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity to speak today. I'd like
to warmly thank our 13-year-old uh, sister, Takai Blaney, for that intervention and her specific recommendations.